and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living, what, soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground he made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That tree right there was not a good tree. But he gave man the ability to choose. Okay. And he also set a boundary there. And a lot of people have issues with boundaries. Okay. Why do, why do I have to do that? Why? Because God puts those boundaries there to protect us. And so, let me, it's not, it's not working for me. Um, so let me um, talk about this. So, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now if you go down and you go over to verse 18 and it says, and the Lord God commanded the man saying, now it's a command, it wasn't just a conversation, it was a command. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest Freely eat. Boundary. But of the tree of the knowledge. Think about that. I was meditating on this last night as I was uh, just studying and, and just really just taking it all in and just thinking about what the Lord actually said about this. He said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there's a combination there going on of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Thou shall not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, it wasn't that they were going to drop dead or right then, but Something was going to happen the moment that they ate of that tree. And the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So the Lord causes a deep sleep to come on Adam. And then he took Eve out of his side. Okay, so... A boundary right here was laid. Now, a lot of people do not like boundaries or they do not like to be told what to do. Um, there's a whole lot in this little bit of chapter right here. And so, God gave them a hint. Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge, enlightenment of good and evil. Okay. Don't eat of that tree. But you're free to eat from the tree of life. Well, wouldn't you think that he would have chosen life? But something in him chose the knowledge of good and evil. Now, 
if you are a studier and a reader and you and a hunter of the word you find out that the garden was just not there something happened between genesis 1 and genesis 1 2 something because he created it, but then it says here in Genesis 1, let me go over there real quick. In the beginning, God um, created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, something between Genesis 1 one and Genesis 2 happened because it says in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth okay that was already cre that was created from the beginning then verse 2 says and the earth was without form and void so something was wrong because he created it so why in verse 2 does he have to do more things with it now, if you go into um, Ezekiel chapter 28, you want to follow me there, please? Father, thank you for your word this morning, that it will not return void, but it shall accomplish the thing in which it has been set, sent. And we thank you for opening the eyes of our understanding in Jesus' name. So in Genesis chapter 28, and we're going to start in verse 13, it says, I mean, excuse me, Ezekiel, I apologize. Ezekiel 28, and we're going to start in verse um, 13. Thou has been in Eden, the garden of God. Well, I'm going to start in 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been, has been, in Eden, the garden of God. Okay, so he was in the garden. Satan was in the garden, All right? I don't think he ran, but Adam was given some specific things to carry out. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, ooh, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbonite, uh, carbon, carbuncle, or carbonite, and gold, the workmanship of thy tablet, tablets, and of thy pipes was prepared, listen to this, in thee, in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so thou was upon the mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect. <clears throat> in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee now so we're talking here about satan we're also saying that he was perfect but remember he rebelled against god when he was in him, he was covering, he guarded the throne. He covered the throne. He kept the throne. Now, that's a pretty high position. He had power and authority.
authority. But that was not enough for him. And you think about the more you give somebody something, sometimes it's just not enough for them and they want more and they want things that they shouldn't want because it's not time for them to have it. He wanted to be God, period. He wanted to be God. Now, the Lord kicked him out And a third of the angels went with him. They decided, they chose, they chose by their own free will that they wanted to follow him. Hence, they come to earth. Now, so that may explain why there's such a gap between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. Because some things occurred there. But the Lord still created, he created the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Curiosity made Adam want to know what that was. Why didn't he choose the tree of life? Because with the tree of life, he could have known everything. But he was being influenced in the garden. Because, remember, Satan had been kicked out of heaven. So when you think about a boundary and God giving us boundaries, it's for our protection. It is so that we do not fall into the snare of the fowler. It's for our protection. But we, and depending on how we were raised and what knowledge we were given when we were being raised, we form our ideas and things like that. Or if there's nobody to lead us and guide us on how to do something as children, we begin to learn a different way, okay? And sometimes our teachers are not sanctified, holy, and saved. Sometimes our teachers were, we should have never listened to the teacher that was teaching us because they didn't know their self. This is why there's so much confusion in everything. So something has to happen. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil just think about it. If someone said, I'm going to give you a choice. You and you and you can have the tree of life if you want it. Or you can take of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What would that do to you? Would you th- sit there and start pondering? Would you sit there and think, well, what is, what is the difference? I would think to myself, if, they, if I had a choice, The tree of life would have told me everything I needed to know. So why would I want to eat from the tree of the knowledge, knowledge of good and evil? Because that tree was going to show me things that could probably destroy me. Okay. So we still have the things today. Choose Christ. Renew your mind. Be saved. Grow in your giftings and your callings. Or go to this church over here that everybody's raving about and pay for your education and pay for your doctorate and pay for this. But there's a catch. You have to do it the way I want it done. Or I'll pull your papers. So when you think about Adam, and the Lord was with Adam, he gave him a really good choice. What do you want? Life? Or do you want to understand how evil works? I I kept thinking, if you choose life, 
you'll understand the right part of good and the right part of evil. evil. Yes. If you chose life, because it would be a protection for you against evil. But it's always tempting to go for something that's different. I want, you know, a tree of the knowledge. Then I'll have the knowledge of good and evil. And I'll know how to control some things. But Adam didn't realize that knowledge would be his undoing. Now, a lot of times things become our own undoing. Because we didn't search out the matter enough. 